Welcome back to Warrington Training Centre. I'm Richard Green and today's Training Tuesday tip is a follow-on from the last one, part two about diverter valves, testing them. Stay tuned. The motor operates on a 240 volt supply, as detailed on the data label shown here. The motor operates using a rotating cam system. Within the body of the motor there is a rotating disc comprising of two hills and two valleys. As a 240 volt supply comes onto the motor, the disc quarter turns, presenting a hill or a valley behind the piston. On our products, this piston is pushed forward by the cam for central heating mould and is allowed to travel back inside the valve body, go back in hot water mould. To test the valve, simply remove the clip. Disconnect the diverter valve motor head and shake it like that. If any water comes out of there, you'll need a new diverter valve head. Also, you'll need a new cartridge because it's passing uh, through the piston. If it's leaking through the piston, you need to make sure the water quality is checked. Make sure there's no iron oxides or magnetite floating around the system. The magnetic filter is fitted and the system has been flushed and cleansed in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. If you put a demand on for central heating, you should feel the motor vibrating and the pin should push forward and lock on the click. If you take a blunt tool and try to push the piston back, it will not move easily. Put a hot water demand on. You should feel the motor vibrating and click in and now if you use the same blunt tool you should be able to push the piston back in very easily if there's no movement on the motor then what you need to do is test it electrically using a suitable uh, voltage indicator device a tested indicator device remove the plug connector you have three connections on the plug. The central connection is the neutral, the outside two are lies for heating and hot water. To check supply voltages, set your multimeter to volts AC and position your probes as shown here. Put a demand on for either heating or hot water and one connection should come live, the other connection should read or show less than 20 volts. We want to prove that the voltage moves to the other side, so if you change your mode of operation now to the opposite mode, this voltage should go to 240 and your original voltage will show less than 20. This is proving that the voltage is moving from one side connection to the other connection. If there's no voltage on either connection then we need to check the continuity through the harness and the connections to the PCB. We can also test the valve motor on a resistance scale, dead testing. Between a live and a neutral, we should have a resistance. We've already ascertained that the centre connection here is a neutral and the two outside connections are live. So if you change your multimeter onto the ohm scale and then go between the centre connection and one of the pins, there should be a path with a measurable resistance. That means it's engaged in one mode of operation. If we then switch to the other side, it should be open line. So this valve should work in, this motor should work in at least one mode of operation. I'll use another example of the diverter valve. If I go between the centre connection and the outside, I can see that there is an open line. So there's no connection between those two pins. And if I go to the other side there, and I'm getting open line again, that means that this valve motor will not work. Also, I can look for short circuits, things that might blow a fuse. So if I look between live and neutral on either of these two connections, and I'm getting a reading, which is less than 10 ohms. In this instance, it's half an ohm. If I was only getting that, that much resistance between live and neutral on this motor, on either connection, that would blow a fuse. Again, the valve motor would be unserviceable. Right, so, hope you found that tip useful. Uh, and stay tuned. 
for more news, views, and how to do's on Batch Training Tuesdays. Take care, till next time, be safe.